everybody and welcome! Today is February 17th, 2020 and you are loved and that is a very important thing that we like to remind each and every single one of our listeners at the beginning of each and every single one of our games. If this is your first time joining in, consider going to youtube.com slash indoor adventures where you can check out all of the VODs that we have of all of our previous games. Uh, and that is, of course, youtube.com slash indoor adventures, or you can find us wherever audio casts are free under the same moniker. Uh, if this is, uh, if you already support us on YouTube, audio casts, Twitch, or, uh, are look and are looking for other ways, uh, to help support the show, consider going to patreon.com slash indoor adventures, where you can gain access to our after show called Nights in the Courtyard, where we answer questions not only from the community, but also from each other and if you already support us on all of those things consider going to indoor adventure no s at the end dot redbubble.com and pick yourself up something nice we got t-shirts we got mugs we got posters we got throw pillows we even have shower curtains all ready for your consumption so consider checking it out because everything you purchase ends up going to help support the show <laughs> but that is it for my opening spiel so Hey, RJ, who are you playing tonight? Hey, everybody, I'm RJ, and I'm playing Kalem, the Shadokai Wizard Cleric. Hi, I'm LB Hackamup, and I am playing Gwen, the Halfling Barbarian Fighter. Hoi! I'm Cyber. I play Arjun. I don't know what it says at the bottom of my screen, because I don't have the stream up. Hi, everybody, I'm Wings, also known as Danae Keener. Uh, God, I almost went all the way through. Uh, <laughs> Coriander the Elgin Paladin is who I'm playing. Nakeheater.com. And I am the Indoor Adventurer, and I shall be your Dungeon Master for the evening. So, last we left off, uh, you all had made it back to the Dwarven Kingdom of Sirts Hellier, freed Gwen from being encased in stone, and then proceeded the long and arduous journey of figuring out the best way to dunk your friend in liquid hot magma. After, of course, Cory was sent swimming down beneath the Forge of the Inspired, she was able to find the a ancient uh, flame elemental, which helped rekindle her summer spirit. After uh, having had that spirit rekindled and arriving at the surface, a lot of you were met by a young dwarven princeling named Truber, uh, who had asked all of your group if uh, you would be able to join him at a royal breakfast. It was at this point that he then asked possibly brunch, it's okay if people don't like brunch. Corey was then rather abrasive, and Arjan, mediating the situation, asked if you could have more time, uh, possibly more of a dinner at this point, to which Truber was understanding of your overall situation, and the lot of these, uh, of these dwarven guards which were a mixture of both dwarves as well as Kryn, the minotaur folk that exist on the continent, ended up leaving your group. It was at that point that you realized that a nice warm bath would probably do you all a little bit of good considering how difficult the last stretch of days had been, and it would also give Cory enough time to potentially cool off. At this point, you were all and you all were greeted by Arjan's uh, Abishai companion, Newell, who transported you all down to the plain of Avernus through the use of dark, swirling smoke. And it was at that point uh, that you ended up meeting a tiefling artificer named Kat, while Arjan, you went to go and discuss things with Tarlan, who had summoned you to this point. While, Ar uh, while Arjan was communicating with Tarlan, the rest of you hopped inside of a ancient black dragon-sized mech, allowing Gwen to pilot this thing through the hellish plains of Avernus, where you were all able to acquire a hellfire weapon uh, at Kat's behest. It was at that point, after uh, you had completed it, that you met with Tiamat, who, or at least Kara, the black aspect of Tiamat. And uh, you were returned back to the plain prime material. At this point, Arjan had not yet returned to the plain, so we are actually going to go back uh, to the point where Arjan has been taken through the halls 
uh, having been summoned by Tarlan. You have now been separated by your friends, which Gwen, as always, was very keen to not let happen, but you assured her that you would be fine. So, Arjan, you have been taken down this long haul, and at this point you are getting familiar, at least mildly, with the overall architecture, architecture that is within the halls of, uh, of the Queen's Chambers. You are then led to uh, this large door, and as it is opened, you can see in front of you a glowing green pool uh, with the almost uh, emanci uh, emaciated re uh, figure of Tarlan sort of resting inside of this pool. And as you get close, you can see that while it is liquid, uh, it is luminescent in nature, and there seem to be afterimages that float by within this pool. And the afterimages all look like people meeting their fate uh, it seems like these are all uh, the last moments of ne'er-do-wells that Tarlane is bathing himself in in order to regain his strength. Oh, shit. <laughs> and... Indoor, what the fuck? <laughs> hey, man. We're starting early. Yeah, we are. Uh, and at this point, as you walk in, the Abishai that you are with bows uh, and actually removes themselves from the room, uh, leaving the two of you to have uh, some form of communication. And Tarlan moves and uh, is sort of like up to about uh, chest high. It's hard to call it a chest because of draconic body, uh, but it is about uh, a little bit below, uh, like towards where their ribs would be. And Tarlan is resting in it. And they turn to look towards you. And you can see that their skin is, a, like, their scales sag a little bit. They aren't as lustrous as they once were. Uh, this is your first time seeing Tarlan awake. You had seen him as soon as he had emerged outside of his crystal uh, confinement. But overall, uh, he is looking better than last you met. And as he initiates conversation with you, uh, he... he he basically asks for a recap, uh, seeing as how he was unable to watch over you past the hollowed lock ruins. He is curious as to what has happened uh, in the meantime. He's been filled into some aspect by Tiamat, but uh, he would prefer to hear it from you at this point. Yeah, so, so I'll tell him uh, pretty much everything that I think is important that happened. Uh definitely the the political maneuvering with the various tiamats uh us going uh going to green reach all the stuff that happened there uh us going to search Hillier, and me almost dying with uh in the uh, crimson duel all right and when you bring up Greenreach, do you bring uh, yeah. the the uh, potential uh, vision? Yeah, I talk about the Bloodlord of the Ashen after. And at this Tarlan, it's almost like he smiles, but it's hard for a lizard face to emote in a, a true smile, but he does that thing where like his mouth opens a little bit and just the... <sighs> Yeah, well, none of it actually happened. And Tarlan nods and says, Well, you know what you are capable of. No. I'm capable of a lot of things, but I'm not capable of that. And um, he says... Maybe not rulership, but strength. This is something you are capable of. Tell me, young one, have you tested your wings yet? No. No, I haven't. 
and Tarlan nods and uh, then looks at you and you can see that his gaze fixes directly on you and this is one of the few times that he has looked at you in a way that is void of malice. He is looking at you not necessarily as an equal but as somebody that he can freely communicate with. And Tarlan says, In this place, close your eyes. And uh, then says, You stand in the halls of the great queen, the legacy of all of those that came before you that tread these very halls. Breathe and know that you are among the honored. You are my aspect upon the plains, and in your veins runs the blood of the elders. Raw, elemental power courses through every one of your scales. So few of our kind are left, and you are our second coming. You will have power anew, and with that power may you find your draconic pride. Queen's resonance is already within you. All that is left for you is for your song to join the ancient harmony of the chromatic chorus. So where does that leave us? I am connected to you. Whether you like it or not, and I will help you. As best I can, I will lend you my strength as I receive it. I am... fixing myself in this place. Whatever that snake was that we fought, Oh, the god? Has left me weaker than I would like. Yeah, that's what happens whenever you cross a god. Yet I live. <sighs> thanks to you. And my friends are alive. Thanks to you. And Tarlan nods and says, I have kept my word. I will continue to keep it so long as you continue to keep yours. Is that... Is that even possible? Like, uh, I may be reading this wrong, but it feels like there was definitely a paradigm shift in the last however long you were out. I can... I'm not your vessel anymore. I, what are you? Because I don't think you're my patron. You're certainly not my father. What relationship do we actually have? I am you. You are me. The relationship that we have is kindred. Do you not wish for me to give you blessings, power? I certainly need power. Then I sense no change. There's no shift between you and I. Just because I am no longer trapped inside you does not mean that we are different now. We've always been different. Arjan, we share a similar goal now.
What is your goal? To defeat Agravain. Turn my rightful place again. Were you, were you not already in your rightful place? You're back here. Agravain's pissed off, so I, I assume that means she chose you again. Because she has chosen me, yes. That much is true. But you, on the material plane, you've already said that these South Paw people are undermining you. They're undermining my company. Do you not wish to see them disappear? I've got bigger things to worry about. You know, at the end of the fucking world. Not just mine. Probably. And Tarlayan nods. Then I will leave you, if that is what you wish. I will still be here if you need me. You seek advice. But the power you gain, look to her. If you seek not, an ample trade. That's it. And Tarlayan rises out of the pool and looks at you. I have asked for your help and you have agreed and then you feel as if your help has been met. That it is enough. So I ask more. I do not demand it as I once did. For you have proven helpful. As much as I hate to admit it. Tarlayan, this is what I want to know. Do our goals really do align? You wish to yes, say. Uh, yes, Agravain is a pain in the ass, but that's just business. Last time we spoke, you still wanted. It seemed to me like your end game was to take control of the Southern Kingdoms to regain what you had in the past, which I, if you're here, it doesn't look like you're going to be able to get that. Yes, I, I was on board for stopping the war, stopping the, cease, the ceaseless death. But if that's not a goal you have anymore, what is the matter? So all that's left is the Dark Star. The end of all things. Which, let's be honest, you've never seen really keen to take interest in. So what is your goal right now? Get better, take your place by her side. You don't need me for that. I don't think you need me for that. What I need is your voice. To say what? To 
speak on our behalf, not just mine. There are those on the plains who do not fear dragons anymore. They do not wish to believe us. Then there are those that continue to spread word of dragons. If you wish for help against this dark star, make the people accepting of our coming. For if we appear in your moment of need, and all the tiny, tiny folk only fear us and fight against us when we are doing what you want us to, then they will fight on two fronts and we will all lose. If you want to stop this dark star, then simply spread the praise of the Queen. Let others know that we will fight by their side. And I got steal a line. You have brought me here. You have fulfilled your end of our original bargain. So I shall do the same. Is this acceptable? And at that, his large head gets right up next to yours. And you can see in that moment that you are a tall individual. You are the size of his muzzle. Yes. And at that, uh, Tarlain slinks back into the pool and extends a claw out towards you. And uh, you feel your, you feel your, like he's raising up his right arm and you feel that your body is also raising up the right arm in that same moment. And your claws connect. And there is a what looks like a droplet of blood on water that comes from the two claws that seems to ripple out. And that rippling encapsulates you. And you feel the dragon mark upon your back begin to radiate. And then Tarlayan brings his claw back and continues to rest in the large pool and says to you, This is what I can muster. But with this blessing, you should have enough to defeat this Kodeth the next time you face off. And Arjun will just nod. Thanks, Tarlayan. And Tarlayan's large head nods. Uh, and at that, he sort of recedes back into this pool of suffering that he seems to be bathing himself in. And it is at that point uh, that you actually get a... You get a message from a an individual that you weren't expecting uh, to hear their voice given the situation, and it is Calum asking uh, where you are. Uh, oh yeah, I haven't. You'll they haven't sent me back yet. I'll be right back. And uh, Tarlayan uh, reminds you one last time to take on your draconic pride 
and use your wings when you get the chance. <laughs> and uh, at that, the door opens once again, and it is Newell this time around who nods to Tarlayan, uh, nods to you, Arjan. Uh, and then they begin to cast uh, this magic that manifests as dark shadows around you. And as you are, uh, as you feel the magic taking hold of you and you begin transferring back, you can see that Newell has what looks like a large scrubbing device and goes up towards uh, Tarlane and dips the scrubbing device into this greenish pool and then begins to just start washing Tarlane's back. And in that moment, I reminded that, like, I imagine Newell as, like, this masterclass assassin. And he's just, they're, they're just scrubbing the big boy. Yep. Oh. Gotta make sure all those, all of that, all of that pool of nasty fill gets in the cracks of the scales. Ooh, that soul juice. Mm. The greatest beverage in all of Avernus. Uh, and it is that uh, that Corey, Calum, and Gwen. Uh, there is a cracking noise as this uh, dark mist sort of fills the space next to you as Arjan appears. Uh, it's, it's like the Thanos portal. Yes. And once again, the four keeps are reunited. Uh, you all smell like sulfur, except Arjan, honestly. Like, Arjan, he still looks fine from the bath he had before. Um, it's like incense. Yeah, there's more of an incense smell to him this time around. But you are all back together. If I recall correctly, we still have the room. Yes, you do. Gwen's already naked, running and jumping in the water. Splish. Oh, uh, I don't know how time really works with all of that. Uh, did anybody ask what time it was? How long we have until our meeting? Uh, Caleb will poke his head out the door to see if there's any, like, staff. The staff that you had met with previously that had informed you that you still had the room uh, informs you that for you all, it's only been about 40 minutes or so. You're, you were still within the time frame <clears throat> of, however, of the hour that you had rented the room for previously when you returned, so it hasn't been that long, and they just look at you rather confused. <laughs> Caleb starts to disrobe again. So, how was your um adventure to Arjun. It was lots of an adventure, just me talking to your old dad. How did that go? He really wants me to use my wings. Fly, it's, baby bird, fly. It's a little claustrophobic down here. It's warmer in here. She There's no correlation between how tight a space is and the with fl I'm just gonna. <sighs> so it's warmer, closer to Corey. <laughs> Corey, so. your hair is just insane. You need to like dip. Ruga, Ruga. <laughs> <laughs> what do y'all think this meeting is about? Maybe. They want to report on what happened in the stronghold. Maybe they want to pay us more. With all that fucking Titan steel that we got out of there, or that we secured in there, they best fucking pay us more. <laughs> <sighs> Here's hoping it doesn't. Here's hoping nothing bad happens. We didn't if... do anything illegal while we were in town, right? Uh. No. Not that I know of. 
unless Coda and I really did start a war. Oh shit, yeah, that would suck. But I mean, neither of us died. Right. And it was all after everything had been settled, so like... Yeah. yeah. Right? I, yeah. Yeah. Unless there was another monster that jumped out and killed him. One can only hope. Uh, we, we can't hope for things like that. Because it's wrong or we never get that lucky. We never get that lucky. Mm. I get lucky all the time. She's Not that kind on of her luck. back. There's a small splash. Ah! She's going to go over and like kind of cat onto his head and start scrubbing his hair. <laughs> Undoes the braid. Just lets it happen. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So after we do this meeting thing, as long as nothing else comes from it, what do you guys want to do next? Uh, if I remember from the docket that we were talking about while you were kind of stoned, we might want to check up on our ask. Mm. Where's the next season? There's a boiling from the center of the hot tub as Tori comes back up and she checks her Corvid skull. The Corvid skull points to the west. The late opposite direction. Right. Well, west is Green Reach, and then there's the uh, uh, the big old skull thing. Well, we I, hopefully we can avoid knowing us. We're probably going exactly there. What's west? Uh, something felled. Um, to the far west is a city, correct? Filled us. Mm -hmm. Filled us. Yeah. Maybe it's there. Maybe. But that's isn't that where the Titan that isn't that where the Titan Skull is? That's where the Rookery of Bone is located. Yeah, that's that's where the Rookery of Bone is, so like would like to avoid that, but it's kind of on that's where all your memories are, Caleb. Wooga. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, also like Goliath's it, I don't know if I can go there since I because there there's another tribe there that my tribe doesn't really get along with. I mean, but uh, is there any sort of diplomatic mission that you could be making? <laughs> no. No. I mean, how likely would it be for them to have heard that the new chieftain of the Thunder, Tread Thunder Clan is a halfling? Probably very. You know, remember how we didn't kill the fuck dude who uh, took Corey's arm? Oh. I'm I'm guessing he probably went somewhere like there, since he's into necrotic shit. Okay. Um, I, mean, I don't it. know, but like that's my guess. Then they're harboring an enemy of the chief. That's true, but also don't want to start a war in my first year. That's so do some diplomacy. I don't know if you noticed, uh, Arjan, but I'm not really that diplomatic. No, that's okay. You no. should rename your axe to diplomacy. It is called diplomacy. The Ronda axe? Oh, no, my old axe was called diplomacy. Because I was told to always start with diplomacy. And that I thought it was a lot. Funny. Yeah, yeah. So, west or east? Leans to look over to Corey. Is thinking pretty hard. Well, I haven't heard from a Rask in a long time. That might be the more time-sensitive situation. Do, do we know that you've been hearing from a Rask? <laughs> nope. This is you've been in contact first. with a Rask? <laughs> this is a Wait, first. You, you what? Talking to a Rask? Yes. Well, Are you like pen pals? I'm anyway. Why? I mean, he was kind of handsome, but not like that handsome. Plus, you have a girlfriend. 
You can talk to people and not be interested in them. Oh shit, I'm in summer form. You can talk <laughs> to them and not be interested in them. <laughs> I'm a lot more irritated about this now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm standoffish. Yes, I've been talking to a ras. What's on it? So, um, if, how long? How how long has it been since you've heard from him? Um, it's been like since before the hollow locks, hasn't it? It was during uh during the hollowed locks. You had reached out while you were in the woods. It was months ago. Was that months ago? Yeah, yeah, it was. Wow. I still had Nom uh, back then. Ah. Uh, you know what? Never mind. He's probably fucking dead. I, I could. I think we should definitely check up on him then. Um. Hmm. How have you been keeping in contact with him then? Well, my bird never came back, did it? Nope. I used to have this bird that he gave me. And I sent it back once, and I got kind of given the runaround by his kobold servants. And then the second time I sent it, I didn't get anything back. I mean, fuck the bird, Caleb. You can. Yeah, call I was about anybody. to say, I'm gonna. I could try. Um, oh shoot! You can yeah yeah you can just do that, can't you? <laughs> Wait, I have a question that I might have missed the answer to, but why is he talking to you? I mean, you're you're not the leader of the group, so like. Well, I'm the person that's on best terms with him now, aren't I? I mean, I didn't do anything wrong. No, your your crime was being with me. Oh. But Corey wasn't there with that meeting. Oh. I thought we hit it off. It's fine. I thought it'd be a good idea to stay in contact. Right. Well, why don't you make the phone call, sir? He's while already I get doing behind it. Behind your ear. Cleaning <laughs> <laughs> um, the feathers. <laughs> so he's going to try to use sending to send a message. It reads. Hello, Rask. It's Calum. Speak to a ruler. Um, apologies again for everything, but Corey has not heard from you in a while. Are you okay? Twenty-five words. <laughs> hey, fam, you up? <laughs> <laughs> Get in, loser. We're going shopping. <laughs> the response that you get back is get the staff. I'm dying. Oh, God. Up the list. <laughs> Shot straight up. Well. And then... I know how sending works. Followed by the people need me back. Uh, Calum shoots straight up, probably knocking Gwen off his shoulders. Ah! <laughs> uh, turns to Arjan and Corey. He's dying. What? He said to get the staff. I think he might be talking about the Gultai staff. Corey jumps out <clears throat> of the hot tub immediately. Hold up. Get her clothes. Hold up. We're gonna need to travel a lot faster than our aura can take us. Y'all think there's anything that we can get from the Forge King or whatever his name is? Did they have like teleportation here? Did we talk yeah. about that? I'm sorry, I zoned out. I was yeah. under the water, Calum. <laughs> Picks Gwen up by under the armpits. Arask is dying. Ow. <laughs> ah! <laughs> he didn't say how, but we can ask the Forge King. 
uh, okay, so like we need to get there fast, right? Right. What I'm saying is, hopefully the Forge King will have faster transportation than what we already have. And I know that he's he's dying and everything, and I definitely don't want that to happen. But I also still really want to figure out what's what's happening in this meeting. Thumbs up. Should would I know about um, teleportation circles in like reading in general? Just like you would need a spot to teleport to in addition to like your own runes and devices. Yeah, I would say that you would you would have been able like teleportation isn't uncommon. It's not unheard of. It's a world of magic and fantasy where dragons exist. Teleportation and portals are things that can happen. We're kind of pretty close to the whole dragons existing thing. We have one on the moon runner. Yeah. Um, maybe the closest I could probably get us if there is some sort of scroll that we can pick up is the moon runner. And from there, it'll be about five days. Hmm. Was it like five days or was it longer? You have no idea where the Moon Runner is. Oh, I should probably call it's a Olivia. Boat. It's a vehicle that has this thing on it. Oh, but it's almost certainly going to be in the water. Yes. If I could send, if we could send Olivia that way and then get this teleport, but then, oh, that would disrupt so much shit. What? My. If, because I don't know if we can actually get this magic circle, and if we send Olivia there ahead of time already, and well, we don't have it. The... I mean, let's yeah. ask the dude. Let's let's go to this meeting first, and hopefully we hopefully we're important enough to get it moved up a little bit, like a a, a lunch meeting, dinner meeting. Right, I'm I'm saying the maybe cut cut those hours out too. Right, right, gotcha. Uh, and uh. Uh, yeah, we'll figure out what we what we can get possibly, and then make our plan from there. Okay. Rising off of Coriander's skin, she dries herself off with heat. Caleb immediately puts a finger to his lips to send her asking, "You lost the staff?" <laughs> it's just this panicked question mark exclamation point. You're dying question mark exclamation point. And then uh, the response that you get again is my life is forfeit unless you retrieve the staff. I was where? unprepared. From where? <laughs> From who? I'm sorry, he was unprepared. We're banished. It's fine. <laughs> Uh, does Caleb relay this information? Yeah. <clears throat> uh, he will once again go, be there as quick as we can. Um, <sighs> hold on. Uh, Hang on. The last bit of information that Arathsk is able to send within the 25 words is there was a creature on the Hag's Island I was not prepared for. Oh, no, later. <laughs> Wait, the thing we fought? Or is there something else? I think it's my kid. Your, oh, but, I mean, was it that powerful? Do you know? Wait, I know wait, where wait, babies wait, wait. come from, okay? No, I was wait. gonna say, do you know what a Gufaya staff is? When motions. Obviously it's, not. It's a staff made from a... Okay, so the legend of the Gulthaya staff dates back really far, but apparently a vampire was staked and in its spot grew a sinister tree and a Gulthaya staff is a staff made from the branches of that tree. <laughs> Vampires aren't real. Gwen. What? Yes, they are. <laughs> oh, you're where a werewolf is real too? Yes. Somewhere in another multiverse, a blood You literally species. bought one today. <laughs> Where? What? In hell. Those were werewolves. I, 
I thought they Arshan, were Arshan, Arshan doesn't know what you were fighting. Oh yeah. K- I know K- that. K- K- I K- know K- this. Listening. Ori's putting her hair up in a, well, she's putting her hair up in a ponytail one hand. Um <sighs> and she says, <sighs> We've killed an evil tree before, we'll just do it again. You have the axe, right? Oh shit. Yes, I do. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Kaylin is hopping, trying to put a boot on. Gwen shakes off like a dog and then puts on her clothes while she's still kind of wet. <laughs> you monster. Make her come back. <laughs> and we, we're we going to try and get an earlier date yes. for dinner? Yeah. Well, you're going to move it to be an early lunch at this point. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so... so <laughs> Sorry. We're just, we're just, just gonna like changing what meal it is. <laughs> Breakfast, no lunch, no dinner, no brunch, no lunch again. No we dinner. are busy. <laughs> Everybody put on put on whatever clothes you think it's appropriate for this, but we need to go now. Gwen like tries to pull her shirt down so that her stomach is not as exposed. <laughs> Uh, I have a question. How much are we telling this dude? Because we could just be like, so we got to go save a dragon, like. We have a dire meeting with uh, the head of the Isle of Rask. It is urgent. We may need uh, immediate transportation if you can point us in the right direction. She touches her nose. Puts on our boots, and we go. To overlook the fact that he's probably calling us in for this for a reason. He probably wants something from us as well. Yeah, well, we can do it when we get back. Yeah. Fuck, man. First we save the dragon, then he'll be super thankful. We'll be able to go back on the island. Maybe I can get a date. Just saying. I mean, that's not priority one, but it's on the list. People are dying. (laughs) People are dying, Gwen. It's just one person, and he's a dragon. You know, I- Technically speaking, yes, people are dying because he's the dragon who controls the temperature of the island. People can get coat. Let's just, let's not, you know what? It's fine. It's going to be fine, guys. We can do this. Quite personally, I don't think that- the solution to climate change is just getting a coat, but that's that's not the hint or there. Arjan, <laughs> you might want to check on dragon's drafts and see what the weather's like over there. Yeah. I don't really have a way to do that. I can do it. I just need a long rest. Alright, we'll take a nap after. Get him okay. some cookies and juice. Let's do this. <laughs> Get that boy some milk. <laughs> God to, to to the <laughs> yes, to the, this is all the mayor you're outfit. Walking and talking. <laughs> you're walking and talking at this point. You've put on if you have fine clothes in your adventuring gear, you can acquire you can put that on. Otherwise, for for a mere two silver, they will press to digitate your clothes for you, unless you have that spell and can do it yourself. Temple of Saloon vestments. Gotcha. So he's in armor. Sounds good. So you make your way to uh to the hallway or like to the entryway to the uh royal quarters, and you are met with the guards who ask who you are. Uh you let them know kind of the situation as a whole. Uh one of them is uh, one of them was actually with the group uh, that had left with Truber to come and get you, so they're able to confirm that you are indeed supposed to be here. And it, and then uh, when you say that you want uh, to move it up to to be a lunch meeting instead of a dinner meeting. Yeah, I mean, they, they did say, like, whenever we were ready and good for this, uh, like, if we could just get, get it moved up, something's come up. Uh, and we may have to leave fairly quickly. So if whatever they want is as important as they made us believe it is, they might want to move it up now. 
and the the Kryn guard that you have been talking to as the the royal guards are mostly minotaur folk uh that you have this too is like kind of has this look of like you don't get to tell the the lord of the forge when to uh, yep. but at the same yep. time he's like you know what i'm just gonna talk to the lord and then he's gonna confirm that i am in the right and then i get <laughs> to tell you all off and he seems kind of snarky about it, but he ends up going in uh, to meet with the Lord. And you are all waiting outside for roughly about uh, 15 minutes or so uh, before this guard ends up coming back. Uh, and you can see that they have a little bit of a defeated demeanor. Uh, they look like they had been ready to tell you off and to come back at dinner and that nobody tells the Lord of the Forge what to do. But it seems like the Dwarven Lord was actually incredibly amenable uh, with what the lot of you were wanting to do. Um, and the guard then uh, says that he will then escort you uh, sure. into, the, uh, into the inner compound. Yeah. And just like on the way, I'm going to be like, oh, sorry that I, I got stuck with you. It's It's been a day. We've been through hell. Like, it's just, it's stressful. And you don't have to wear shoes, do you? The guard, uh, are you talking to the Minotaur? Yeah. And the Minotaur says, um, no, I've, I don't think I've ever worn shoes. You must save a fortune. And then uh, the guard basically says, uh, saves a, like, makes a comment about how just because he saves a fortune on shoes means that he has to spend money on more expensive pants just because they have a pre cut hole in the back. Uh, you'd think that pants would be cheaper for using less material, but for some reason, no, the less material a pant uses, the more expensive that they are. And he is God just awful. He's flustered by it. He, he, there is a sense of commiseration with you, Arjan. <laughs> uh, and the lot of you, uh, and you realize going into this dwarven hold that the architecture is beautiful, as, uh, as beautiful as it is ancient. And walking through, you can see that there are, um, there are frescoes that have been carved into the walls uh, that show a um that aren't necessarily combat related which is something that you would always think would be like the real highlight but instead it shows what looks like the origin of the dwarves you see that there is one large dwarf that is before a uh, a massive forge and the first thing that this dwarf did was create someone similar uh in height and in size to it uh and Calum being able to read Dwarven, uh, what you're seeing is that these dwarves believe that Moradin created Gond uh, as kind of like a lab assistant style figure. Uh, and then Moradin and Gond together uh, were able to perfect the mountain dwarves. Uh, and then through their divine inspiration, the dwarves were then able to create their own um their own culture and their own inventions and that sort of thing. Uh, and it really is a, a beautiful tale, but you are being ushered through these halls in such a manner that you don't have time to really sit and read all of the inner details of this grand work. Uh, but the architecture itself, fine. Uh, and you are all eventually led into a large room uh that is a uh that at the center of it is this very oblong table uh that has very uh very defined edges to it and there are a set of chairs that are presented as well and on one end uh of the chair uh one end of this table you see that there are two seats next to each other which you assume are going to be for the king and the queen uh the lord and the lord's wife i didn't have a name for it so king and queen is fine um lady. the thank you that one i don't know why i blanked so the lord and the lady um and as you are all it's because she's not on camera anymore no she's not oh lady i miss her so much um and 
you are all uh, brought into this room. And after uh, less than a minute of waiting, uh, the doors open and you see that there is a dwarven figure uh, who isn't wearing like regal aesthetic, but uh, is instead announcing the arrival of the Lord of the Forge, Metzger Ebenhalt, and the Lady of the Forge, Diana Ebenhalt. And the two of them walk in and this dwarf has his beard is the color of gold it is like a blondish bearded color typically you're you're used to seeing dwarves with like black brown or red hair but this dwarf's blonde beard just shines it must be and it looks lush it doesn't look like the coarse kind of beard hair that you are again accustomed to seeing uh the more um the more hill dwarf uh variants this seems like there is a there is a sense of finesse uh with lord ebenhalt himself and uh his wife diana comes in as well and you can see that uh she has a she has large sideburns that kind of connect into more of a uh more of like a mutton chop stash kind of thing and there's a, a some tasteful hair coming down below uh off of her chin as well that seems to then braid into the sides of the mutton chops and she looks incredible in her uh in her get up as well and then the retainer says um now introducing Safir Ebenhalt, the youngest of the Ebenhalt children, with her personal retainer, Kaz. And uh, you see that there is a young dwarven woman who then comes in as well. Uh, it looks like her, her facial hair has not come in yet. Uh, it is still very much more of like a baby face that she has going on. Uh, with uh, golden hair the same color as her father's but while her father and her mother have these deep jet colored eyes her eyes shine a bright blue the color of sapphires and you're guessing that that is probably where her name came from and her personal attendant you see is a large minotaur uh, named Kaz who then kind of accompanies her and sits next to her as well and at that they uh they uh the announcer bows and then takes a step out from uh takes a step out of the chamber and the doors close and you can see that there are several guards that remain uh but mostly because you're in a closed room with the lord of the forge there needs to be at least a little bit of extra guarding going on here um and uh as you all uh, sit down and the announcer ends up coming out uh, or leaving, uh, Metzger says, Ah, welcome. Uh, sit, sit, all of you, sit. Uh, please, make yourselves at home. And uh, Diana takes a seat next to him and Safir and Kaz sit next to each other. Um, and uh, Metzger says, I would like to say thank you. Uh, first and foremost, for your diligent job uh, at the Fire Giant Stronghold, uh, I heard from uh, my middle son, Truba, that you are all the ones who ended up going. Uh, and I would like to say thank you. Uh, it is not often that we get outsiders who are willing to help us uh, in the way that you have. I understand that uh, overhearing bits and pieces from my brother-in-law, Altam, as well as my son, Truba, that you are all very busy with this um, finding your seasons thing. So oh. I wanted to help uh, expedite uh, some of the process. Uh, typically, uh, you look confused. Uh, big, tall... What are all of your names? Uh, by, by the way, I didn't hear... The announcer did not say your names when you all came in, so I did not catch them. Uh, I'm, I'm Gwen Stompfoot. 
of the Tread Thunder Clan. She does the Goliath bow. And uh, Metzger nods towards you and just. I did not know that the Goliaths accepted halflings into their society. They don't normally. Well, uh, if what I have heard is true, they made a proper exception in your case. Thank you, my lord. Oh, please. No, none of that. Uh, we, are at, we are at lunch. I, I would have preferred a little bit more notice so I could round up all of my children and we could all have a family dinner with you all, but I, I understand. You are, you are busy. We offered you uh, that you could come at any time, uh, but if you don't mind me asking, what is it? And Diana sort of pats him. They haven't said their names yet. Only that one. And she like points towards Gwen. So what about you, darling? What is your name? And Diana just sort of leans forward and looks over towards you, Caleb. Oh, uh, my name is Caleb. I'm a cleric of saloon. That is, that is very nice. I'm sure you and Altum got along quite well. And uh, Metzger looks and he's like, actually, from what Altum was saying, they did. And she's like, oh, shut up. <laughs> oh, what about you? Uh, the uh, very tall, scaled one. Uh, Arjun, Arjun Yodar is uh, chief financial officer and founder of Tyrant Security. And they both look at you. I have not heard of this Tyrant Security. What is it going You will. Oh. <laughs> and they both like <laughs> and uh Saphir also like kind of has a, a little bit of a kickback and Kaz just snorts and leans in and in dwarvish uh Caleb, you hear Kaz say, I like this one. <laughs> well that is uh that is very forward. Um, uh, what is it that we will hear? Hopefully good things. Uh, the the job that we've done for you, uh, hopefully, uh, you'll be able to trust a lot more people with that sort of uh, delicate job. I see, I see. All right. This is Zupa and, and you. And uh, Metzger motions towards you, Corey. Who, are you still in summer form? Hell yes. Okay. <laughs> God. <laughs> and what is your name? Are oh, you a uh, fiery? As, atten as attention is brought to Corey, I imagine that the uh, the rest of the party is like, oh shit, she's still in summer form. Yeah. There's a moment of tension. Um, and she just stands there for a moment and uh, she will take her hand, um, bring it out in front of her and uh, give a very formal half bow and say, you may call me Corey. I am the Lower Kaelin of the Fallen Leaves. And she adds in Ignan and the Keeper of the Name of Fire. And at that, you see Metzger, like, straightens up a little bit. He says, I... and then uh, in Ignan, he responds back and says, may the flame's blessing be upon you. And also upon you. <laughs> And also with you. <laughs> and and also your with your spirit. spirit. <laughs> and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. <laughs> and with your embers. <laughs> uh, and as you do, uh, he smiles and Diana just looks towards him. And he has a much bigger smile on his face. Uh, it is a very warm smile. And he's, uh, he says, very well met. Uh, Corey, if you could take a seat. Uh, you standing and me sitting is making me a little nervous, I will admit. She nods politely and she goes and she sits. And she is, like, she is very straight and very, like, just calculated and uh, graceful movements. It's like she's done all of this before. Okay. So you are all seated, and at this point, uh, 
Metzger uh, actually raises his hands and claps twice. Uh, and when he does, uh, he says, well, now that we've met you all, it would be rude if we didn't have conversation, at least with some beer or some uh, some sort of uh, food, to put it lightly. Uh, so, and at that, the doors open again, and you can see that there is a uh, wait staff that actually comes in. And there is a, um, it is full of, uh, the food that you receive is uh, various meats that you have not seen since your journey here under the mountain. There, uh, there is pork, there is beef, there is fine beer, there is cheese. There are all sorts of these foods that they seem to have imported from the surface down below, uh, as well as... Uh, wonderfully uh, wonderfully grilled mushrooms uh, are available at the table and you can see that there are th uh, thick slices of tomatoes as well there seems to be a plethora of like ve of, of vegetable choices as well as meat options and uh, Metzger just motions for you all to help yourselves as it's served more of a family dining style uh, rather than each of you getting this more like tailored plate he doesn't know who you are yet so instead he has just offered you options and so you can fill your plates to your heart's content and when you see and when uh it looks like a a tray or plate of whatever variety of food is getting low wait staff will come in remove that plate and then just bring out more and arjan you know you and gwen both have the same like gut feeling of oh my god it's a free buffet arjan is happy because it's free and he can nom as many foods as he wants gwen is just excited about the sheer quantity and quality as this is this food is it is made by a true culinarian. There is no way that whoever made this does not love what they do with all that they can. This food is made with passion. You guys see, her, see Gwen tear up a little bit? <laughs> She's eating this food. Are you okay? <laughs> it's just so good. Sorry. <laughs> It's fine. No, it's really good. Thank you so much for this wonderful food. <laughs> and uh, Metzger is just smiling to himself, and he's just like, it's fine, it's fine. Uh, it's uh, quite literally uh, one of the least things that I can do here. But um, what I was saying before, we brought food. Now we have food. We can talk over it. I would like to uh, thank you for what you have done in helping liberate the uh, stronghold from whatever things were in there. Uh, when you had uh, signed on to the contract, uh, there was mention of a finder's fee. And typically what will happen is that if you stay here within the mines, that we will fill out the required paperwork, go through the CSIS query, make sure that you get all of the funds that are owed to you as part of the finder's fee. If it had ended up being a completely uh, desolate place, if it had just been a, uh, yeah, a rock in the middle of no place, uh, maybe not so much as a finder's fee, yeah? But from what we have heard, there is more than just rock down there. And we can confirm that. Which is why we thought that uh, expedites the process. Uh, as Trubert said, and as I had mentioned before, you all seem like uh, very mobile individuals. Yes. How long to did say you, the least. How long did you plan on staying here? No more than another hour. Oh, is that soon? Uh, yes. Uh, a matter of dire urgency has come up. I do not like the sound of this dire emergency. Uh, uh, yeah, we, we don't like the sound of it either. What is happening? 
If you don't mind me asking. We have been requested uh, to do a very timely job by the head of the Isle of Rask. Oh. Is it Bronzeband himself? Yes. Uh, a matter of personal urgency for him. I see. So this tyrant security is on uh, speed sending with the dragon. It seems... Yes, seems good. Seems good for you, for your business. I will not correct him. <laughs> oh, not incorrect. <laughs> uh, well, that sounds uh, urgent, to say the least. Uh, is there anything that we can do to help? Uh, <laughs> Not to uh, make demands or ask of more hospitality than you're ready to give, but uh, once again, this is a matter of dire urgency that we make our way to uh, Araska as soon as possible. If there's anything that you can do to help us, you know, if, if you can really expedite this process, uh, I'm sure Arask would find it in his favor. I'm, I'm sure he would as well. Hmm. I do dealings with the dragon from time to time, but no one has heard from him for several months now. Right. So, with that in mind, urgent dealings. You said uh, previously a dire situation. I'm guessing everything is uh, Nixia good with the dragon? I'm I'm hesitant to say any more than he I understand. wants to get out. Well then, seems time is of the essence. I regret to admit, we are not... Uh, we are not very arcanely inclined here. <coughs> Within the city, uh, much more, uh, well, we've, we have many temples, but if you're looking for some place that has uh, capabilities of quicker movement, the City of Mages would be your option. The floating city, Vasco, towards the coast. There, I'm... I have friends there. If you would like, I can give you a letter of recommendation. They would be happy to tell, take you wherever you need to go, so long as you know the coordinates. I but can make that work. Ah, wonderful. So, with that in mind, uh, and at this, the uh, all of the uh, like lunch dishes have kind of been taken away, and instead, uh, trays of sweets and other goodies have been brought out. And you can see that there is like strawberries and cream. Uh, there are cakes. There are cookies. There are um, there's all sorts of treats that are here and Gwen this is incredible you have seen there must be a chocolatier somewhere in this city because there is chocolate that is coated in sugar you don't know how it works but it it holds itself together uh it's <laughs> <laughs> you you are fairly certain that they are they are importing these goods from Greenreach or must know someone's secret recipe over there because there's no way that these dwarves are making anything as good like you thought your favorite cookie was the one that your mom made you when you were eight fuck were you wrong <laughs> <laughs> Gwen you notice that Gwen is uncharacteristically quiet through this whole time and Caleb if you're sitting next to her you can just see her like 
like wide eyed at the food and just like 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 in the end of um hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy when they're eating the food at the table just like sobbing <laughs> to their food quietly she's just like oh. like kind of letting her hair fall down over her face and just like shoving food into her mouth Caleb's hand goes to the top of her head and just a slow pat <laughs> I'm not gonna tell my mom <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, so, uh, at that, Metzger, uh, sends for someone to bring him appropriate paperwork, or at least, uh, a parchment and a pen, and he will write you a, a note, uh, to be direct, uh, directed towards Moralphus Negley, uh, the, um, what is it? The, uh, the Grand Archivist. Uh, that you are to receive uh, magical transportation at the behest of one Lord of the Forge, Metzger Ebenhalt. And he signs on to the signs on to the parchment, rolls up the parchment, and then you can see sealing waxed, uh, sealing wax sealant ring, uh, and uh, claps his hands together uh, and says, "Ah, easy enough." And uh, then uh, one of the guards will pick up the note uh, and will hand it towards you, Arjan, as you uh, had made note that your, your title within the party sounded much more official and business, business, business than your uh, other party members. So they are just sort of making an assumption that you are the business end of things. Pop it in the bag of holding. And... Uh, once the desserts are cleared, Metzger says, Okay. There's one last thing for all of you, which I've been trying to get to this entire time, but more food just kept coming out. It was so delicious. And Diana smacks him again and just, You kept putting it off. This isn't about them. And he just, I... <laughs> okay, so... You'll find us free. This is, uh, hopefully, this should be agreeable uh, as compensation. Not only uh, will we help you, but uh, hopefully this helps you out a little bit as well. And uh, at that, you see a... It is three minotaurs come in, each holding what look like rather hefty sacks uh and they will place them on the table in front of your group and you can hear the sound of coinage rustling against each other inside of each of these large bags arjan uh as metzger says hopefully this will be uh, amenable to you you peek inside the first bag and you almost have to immediately shut it because inside you see what look like a pile of platinum pieces. <coughs> yeah, yeah, this would, this would be <laughs> agreeable. We figured that this was the easiest way to uh, get you all the money that you are owed. So hopefully, uh, if you ever find yourself in Search Hellier again, Taking on find uh, finders fee missions, not exactly a bad thing. We <clears throat> we will certainly keep that in mind. And uh, at that, um, he says, um, "And I have also heard word that you came in with uh, a, a pack animal of sorts." Yes. I have made sure that the that your boarding fee is taken care of. Do not worry. Thanks. Are you planning on going? If you are planning on going to Vasco, I will see to it that you have as much food, drink, water as you need to make it there. Again, uh, you have my thanks. Can you give me the name of the person who did the chocolates? And uh, 
he uh, he says yes. Uh, that it is a uh, it is a dwarven fellow by the name of Mumbles. 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 Um. Beep, 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 beep. Sorry, sir. Um. Uh. One last question. Would you happen to have anybody in your court who could also cast sending? We might have someone. Well, um, it would probably be in our best interest if I could meet with them so you could have us on speed dial as well. And uh, he nods uh, and says um, that they will look for someone uh, what, and then have them meet you at your cart uh, when you are ready to go. Or at least a name something uh if he he's under the assumption that you guys are going to be leaving within the next hour uh so he will make sure to have someone down there uh for you to communicate with and uh at that uh he says uh we owe you a great debt and as the leader of the free city of Sertelia, we offer you our sincere thanks for your discretion in taking care of this issue. Thank you again. You're very welcome. Uh, if you ever find uh, yourself or any of your people, uh, if you find them in trouble with the Tread Thunder Clan, just uh, tell them my name and that uh, we're cool and uh, you'll be set. And uh, he says, ask us uh, Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Gwen grabs the bags as we're leaving. <laughs> and just hucks two of them over her shoulders. Gwen, you are capable of carrying quite a bit of weight. The fact that you hear jingleys, very, very nice jingleys. You, I feel, were more focused on the chocolates. You don't know what's inside these bags, yeah. but you know that they are large and they are full. And this is probably more than you've been paid in quite some time. Uh, it seems like whatever you did in Greenreach will most likely pale in comparison to however much this gold, uh, gold or platinum be. And before we go into our break, uh, as you guys are uh, escorted out of the uh, Lord of the Forge's domain, uh, Eventually, you will be able to count up all of these platinum pieces with a total of 3,500 platinum. I can we buy reach, green bitch. reach. <laughs> On the way out, uh, Corey will approach Sapphire, uh, tell her she has uh, more beautiful eyes than she has ever seen, and she will kiss her hand. And uh, Sapphire blushes. And uh, Kaz just sort of like looks at you, looks at the holding hands, but then is like, all right, everyone gets one. Like he's <laughs> he's watching you, but more so in the fact that like he let his guard down just enough that a almost stranger then touched the person that he was supposed to be protecting and he doesn't know how he feels about that. Hell yeah. Uh, and, uh, Saphir swoons a little bit. Like, she's definitely like, oh, that's thank you. Uh, and, uh, as you are leaving, uh, Metzger calls out in Ignan to you, uh, Corey, and says, um, may you stay ever embered. And that is where we are going to go to our break for the evening. So I would like to say thank you to everybody who has decided to stop by and join us for this wonderful romp. We are going to try and be back in five to ten minutes. So don't go no place unless it is to grab a food, grab a drink, grab a friend, or possibly go to indooradventure.redbubble.com. There's no S at the end of that. And pick yourself up something nice. But we shall return shortly. All right, everybody. See you soon. Do it. <laughs> <laughs>
for you audio cast listeners, I want you to know that that padding sound was not what your dirty mind might have thought it was. <laughs> However, it was instead LB patting Asmo's butt to make him go meow. Or it was Abaddon. I make. Abaddon. Yep. That one. I got the cats confused. Hello, everybody, and welcome. We have returned back from where we were. You are all on your way. Uh, freshly having been paid your 3,500 platinum pieces uh, to begin making your way back towards the stabled area where you had left Rumble Thunder almost a month ago at this point. It's been a while that you've been in Sir Tellier. Is there anything that you would like to do as you are exiting this area? Uh, just make sure that we get all of our stuff from the Ceaseless Quarry. Uh, did we have any orders that we didn't pick up? Um, No, everything was delivered, I believe. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, stopping at Mumbles, getting a fuck ton of chocolate, oh, Mumbles. sending some to my family. Mumbles, like, he lives in the royal... He lives in the royal facility. He doesn't have a standalone shop. Can I purchase stuff from him? Can we, like, go around and see if, like, we can commission the chocolatier? <laughs> Uh, can we ask that before we leave? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, if you are asking that of uh Metzger while you are still there, uh, he will just see that it's done. There's no cost of uh commission. He is the Lord of the Forge. He kind of has last. He kind of has uh, a say with certain things here. Yeah. So Gwen will package some of it up really carefully and send it to her brother in Greenreach. Gotcha. All right, so the Chocolatier has been commissioned uh, and you are all heading off uh, towards, uh, you go to the Ceaseless Quarry uh, and while you were there, uh, one of the guards that uh, had escorted you towards the edge of the compound actually walked with you towards the Ceaseless Quarry on a, uh, not to like check up on you, but it seems like one of the few individuals that is capable of casting Sending that the king knows of uh, is actually the clerk of the Ceaseless Quarry. Uh, so they are then asked uh, if they would be able to establish contact with you, Calum. Uh, as a means of communique. And uh, looking you up and down, the um, the halfling that is behind the bar, uh, Yevon, or that's behind the counter, Yevon nods and then uh, like puts their fingers up to the sides of their temples as is classic uh sending maneuver and you see them uh mouth uh mouthing something as part of the casting of the spell and uh Calum, what you end up receiving is testing testing uh this is yevon bear carver uh asking for uh testing the uh Testing sending for King uh, Lord of the Forge Metzger Ebenhalt. Um, yeah, Calum puts a finger to his lips and just goes, uh, "This is Calum. Message received. Connection established." And Metzger, or not Metzger, but Yevon, nods, and uh, the two of you are able to at least have a point of communique. Calum, you also know uh, that should you need to get into contact with Metzger himself, all you need to do is send him a sending spell. And then uh, you will hear a, uh, if Metzger needs to reply again, he will just have Yevon do it. But yes, uh, you are <clears throat> able to collect all of your goods and everything else from, uh, from the Ceaseless Quarry and begin making your way back towards the stables, having successfully uh, gotten paid for what was rightfully quite a dangerous mission. That was a lot of fucking cash. Yeah. Yes. I'm going to get into contact with Olivia to see if she can start heading over to the Alivarask. 
Oh, uh, it's the Isle of... Yeah, okay. We need to get the staff. Okay. Uh, what are we going to do with all this money? Can we put it in the bag of holding? Oh, uh, yeah, that's exactly where it went. Okay. Uh, yeah, Gwen, as soon as it's... As soon as you realize that you would have to be carrying three almost overflowing sacks of cash down the city streets, you're like, ah, holding, holding, holding. I'm hoping that Arask has enough sway on the mainland that we can get. We need a house. We need a base of operations. Can't the tribe be that? We need something that if people need to get in contact with us, oh. it, they don't have access to sending or any other magical ways to contact us. We need, we need a business office. <laughs> well, specifically, I need a business office, but us as the four keeps. We need a home. We've been traveling around a lot. And we never know where we're going to stay. Never know how expensive that place is going to be. Let's, well, to, to let's... be honest, I mean, like, I've been traveling my whole life. Well, most of my life. So, like, I thought we kind of were each other's home. We are. All that being said, probably isn't... I'm sorry, hold on, I'm Summer Corey. All that being said, <laughs> it probably <laughs> isn't wise to be carrying around this much money on us at all times. Considering at any moment one of us could get jumped and mugged and left in a bag in a street. Kayla well, immediately <laughs> a few steps to the side. Yeah. Unless, mm -hmm. unless they know that they are going to be able to uh, grab your chest out of this bag. I don't think we have to worry about our money being taken. Just the bag. But yeah, that's that's an issue. Um, I'm just, I'm just saying it might be nice for us to have a place that we know we can go back to in the middle of all this. Yeah, fine. Oh, what would you want to do with the money? Oh, no, I, I don't have any, I, I, have, I can't even fathom what one would do with that much money. But like, I, it's, no, you're right. We should have some sort of base of operations or like hub for people. But where, where, where would we set up? That's what I'm saying. I'm hoping a Rask has enough sway on the mainland where well, we can get settled without rubbing elbows with anybody. Right. We're gonna have to save him from dying first now, aren't we? Yeah. We could set up in Marsville. I um, we could. Well uh, There's a lot of, of loopholes and stuff. Yeah, that 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 seems a bit more political. Yeah. You'd have to like talk to the trade commission because then you have to set up a place of business and then you're gonna have to talk to the carpenters guild and the stonemasons guild and it, you're gonna nap for 12 minutes and one of us is gonna get arrested. Sorry, tangent. I'm just saying the, la the last time we did a job for a rask, we did, we were able to get a house. Hopefully we can get another one this time that we won't be kicked out of. True, and we will have the one that we are we got kicked out of, but we'll go back to, right? I think we're going to be lucky if we don't get arrested for being banished. That's true. Uh, well, <clears throat> Aras was contacting you, right? He was we talking to us. Contacted Aras. 
I'll contact him again when I have the power to to make sure that everything is settled when we get back so we don't get arrested on landfall. I feel like this is going to be a heist. We're going to have to do a heist to save Arask's uh, life. Lights in the courtyard. Uh, so, our, I mean, what's our beast's name? Thunder? Put? Tread Thunder. Or, uh, Rumble, Rumble Thunder. Thunder. Rumble Thunder. Rumble Thunder. Yeah, he could... <laughs> this, city, the, this Sunday at the Coliseum, come see Rumble <laughs> Thunder stomp through cars. Yeah. Take a pace uh, with the whole sea, but you're only going to need the A. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he can move pretty fast, or she can move pretty fast, right? Yeah. So, uh, <clears throat> do you think you do you think we should get like a couple horses? For everyone else? What? We Are we going to bring a cart? We want to move fast, right? Uh, what well, would we... Would we move faster without without the cart? Can we just leave the cart here? I mean, I think we can buy one when we get there. I don't think we're going to have trouble with that. <laughs> right. What about Cybra? Oh, she can run with us, right? Or ride on her back. We could get her a puppy seat. Rumble Thunder be able to take, uh, well, ride three people? Would three people be able to ride on Rumble Thunder? Don't think so. But that's why I was, well, that, that's why I was suggesting horses. We get horses. We get... Oh my god, this is becoming a Okay. So, if one of you hops onto the back of the fox and then is able to cross the river, and then we send it back across. No. And I get the bag of rice. The fox eats the chicken seed. Arjan has already eaten the chicken. (laughs) Arjan Arjan. is the chicken. Wait, what? The chicken was an abyssal creature. It was an abyssal chicken. Uh, How long is it going to take us to get from Sir Tellier to the mage city? How long is it going to take us to get to Vascor? Number one, on the cart, and number two, on horses, and also the aura. So, let us look at the aura itself. Oh, shit, I can send a steed. Yeah, yeah. you can. He probably has exactly one horse. So the aura can move 50 feet in a round. I think that's the same as a horse. Roughly the same as a horse. An aura is a large beast. Roughly the same as a horse. It's more like a bison. Uh, so realistically, uh, <laughs> two elves and a halfling could sit on the back of a of one Rumble Thunder, but then you would need some other beastie to be able to uh, sit alongside or uh, be the riding companion for your draconian friend. We've got we've got Rumble Thunder. We've got Cybra. And we've got um, fucking oh god, hold on, Ambleforth. <laughs> god, that 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 took a minute. Um, I feel like between the three of them, we can get there. Um, right, PDQ. How much slower would we be with the cart? With the cart, uh, the cart would add roughly about four days onto your journey. So if you were trying so, to go like bats out of the hells uh, to the city of Vascor in the meantime, um, it would be it would behoove you to not include the cart. Boo. Behoove. Stop. Horses. Stop. <laughs> um, okay, so. The amount of puns do- in this session has been negligible. Up until this point do we get extra horses or not nah? we can make do with one one gwen and i can ride one um you on rumble thunder corey on ample fourth gwen if you want to... cyber yeah oh, yeah okay cyber has barding so i could ride with either you or corey we're set 
All right, so, cool. Uh, so with with our mounts, we uh, we do. <clears throat> okay. Uh, so when you get to the uh, when you get to the boarding area, uh, your cart was uh, going to be replaced with a large covered wagon uh, that would allow you to avoid getting drenched by the elements, have a little bit of protection from wind, that sort of thing. Uh, and they are in the process of stocking it full of supplies uh, that you would need for your journey. But if you express that you are just going to go, um, they will, they don't really know how else to offer you these goods. Uh, let's get one horse for baggage. Do we have a bag of holding now? We do. It is very full of platinum now. <laughs> we'll come back for it. For what? The stuff? No, uh, no. Don't necessarily have to go back for it. Well, I'm just uh, saying, we're going to need food on the road. So yeah, I will open up the bag of holding for foodstuffs. Okay. However much we can fit in there. Alrighty. So I will say that since you are shortening your trip, if you don't include the casks of fine dwarven ale, uh, but, you um, will be able to fit all of the food necessary in there. Okay, but like, can we can we get a cask and just like have it like with Rumble Thunder? They will give you two casks of fine dwarven ale that they will put on either side of Rumble Thunder to even out the weight. Arcs don't need saddlebags, they need saddle casks. Obviously. I'm gonna add the priorities are well in order. C Caleb and Corey just staring at the two. <laughs> like yeah. Uh Corey's <clears throat> gonna take a long rest so she can prepare fine steed. Okay, so you're going to need eight hours or uh four hours. Uh Okay. Well, uh, we're getting everything ready. She can be mm -hmm. doing that. And also, Caleb can be doing that. Well, um, before I take the short rest, then I'm going to message Olivia. Uh, messages Olivia something. Uh, hope you're not busy. Something urgent came up. Can you head to the Isle of Arask? Um, Might get perks. <laughs> uh, compensation. Um, negotiable. <laughs> See you soon. Uh, and the message is, uh, it's very quick. Uh, and she sounds a little, um, she sounds a little hurried in her response. Um, that says, uh, kind of busy. We'll see you soon. Do my best to get there. I'm out of spell slots, by the way, so... She'll be fine. She can handle herself. I'm not worried. Are you worried? A little worried. I'm gonna get this bitch a sending stone. Oh, You're gonna yeah, call me every stone. day! <laughs> I mean, in four days, we're going to banff right to her, so whatever mess she's in. No, you're... So the trip other would have taken 14 days total. You were in taking four less days four than days. it would have we're yes. going to banff right to her, so... That one. Whatever is happening is <clears throat> going on for longer than two weeks. <sighs> we teleport onto the wreckage of the... <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sorry. No, it's all right. I like this plan. Stop. <laughs> all right. So uh, you managed uh, both of the elves end up going through their resting period uh, as part of getting ready. So there is a four hour period where Arjan, you and Gwen are are doing the best that you can to prepare for the situation. That would involve picking up extra bolts for your crossbow, uh, which 
I wanted to uh, prop more properly describe previously. I had uh, explained that it looked like more of an X on the front of the bow, uh, but it is uh, just that the bows are actually more like two C's next to each other, and it is two barrels side by side on the front end of the crossbow rather than being uh, one on top, one on bottom. Okay. So it looks like an X form, but it is still able to fire with the string only being attached to one. It's a double barrel. Yeah, it's a double barrel crossbow. Okay. Um, and Arshon's actually going to have it out uh, for a little bit of this. Um, and he is going to do something I hasn't done in a little bit too long, which is draw a ritual circle. He's going to uh, bite his finger and uh draw a a circle with a five point star um uh what what are you doing he's gonna lay the crossbow on top of it and he is just going to uh sit there in a slightly meditative pose i'm and, guarding the door <laughs> um the the circles uh on the five points of the star ignite in five different colors of flame and the bow itself uh is consumed by this fire and there is no trace of the circle left or the bow hmm some magic bullshit that seemed a little demonic if i'm gonna be honest what was that uh, infernal not well draconic not demonic oh. uh he's going to raise his hand and in a burst of uh prismatic fire the crossbow reappears in his hand ah oh well that's handy and then he will dismiss it again in about a fire I have made a, a weapon bond. Because Arjan is an Eldritch Knight now. Aw, yes. Ooh. All right, so the weapon bond ritual takes about an hour. Uh, Gwen, you said that you were guarding the door during yeah. this hour long process. Yeah. Okay. She and then... probably got bored and started braiding. Uh cyber's tail or something okay sounds good uh i would say also during this time you probably want to put the writing equipment onto cybra uh oh, yeah. you're used to uh writing without barding so at this point having a little saddle for uh for your wolf pupper is going to help uh at least a little bit thankfully mm -hmm. no animal handling checks are in need of being made at this point um, so is there anything else that Arjan and Gwen would like to do in the period of time where Calum and Corey are resting and, uh, refitting their spells? No, I don't think so. Okay. Maybe writing a letter with her, uh, with the chocolates and stuff after the, like, so when she sends it, it's like, Hey, I'm doing things. It's super cool. Hope you guys are good. Here's some chocolates. Hopefully they're not smushed. Or melted. I'm sure it'll be fine. Yeah. So, uh, you managed to get a hold of, um, get a hold of these chocolates, write out this letter, find a courier uh, who is willing to then take them out to, uh, out to Greenreach. Given the situation, again, thankfully, uh, Lord Ebenholtz Voice carries a certain amount of sway uh, in the city proper, and uh, the courier agrees to do this for you on behalf of uh, on behalf of the king's word, uh, or the lord's word, at this point. Uh, after four hours, Corey, you end up coming to from your uh meditation that was the word i was looking for and calum you also end up uh coming to from your meditation and your group is ready to go so 
It is Arjan on Rumble Thunder, Gwen on Cybra, and Corey and Calum on Ambleforth. And together, your group makes their way back out of Surt's Hellier. Uh, and along the way, you are, are, are pretty glad that uh, you didn't try and look for a horse here, uh, as there aren't any horse merchants in Surt's Hellier, this being a completely underground city. Uh, you saw a lot of beetle wranglers trying to sell you uh, a, as fine a steed as there ever was one. Uh, it looks like riding beetles are actually the primary mode of transportation here underneath the mountain. Uh, but seeing as how you are going to be going back out onto the plains, it's, it's, you're rather glad that you didn't buy a beetle. Um, but you are able to make your way out of the, uh, out of the long tunnels that led towards, uh, the inner city. And once you are back out onto the, uh, back out onto the mountain pass, you begin making your way towards the open fields down towards the south. You get uh, several hours down there and make your way uh, mostly down this mountain pass, but then it is time, uh, at least for Gwen and Arjan, who had not had a four-hour rest in the late afternoon, uh, that it, you, Rumble Thunder, Cybra, uh, all have to kind of take a moment to uh, at least catch some, catch some shut eye, leaving Corey, Calum, and Tikan, the uh, small wooded familiar, to stay on watch over the evening. Uh, so while Arjan, you, and Gwen end up getting some shut eye, uh, Corey and Calum, is there anything that the two of you would like to do during this time? Ambleforth seems like. They could run forever. Being this this fey creature of the wilds themselves, Ambleforth doesn't seem to have the same kind of uh, sleep requirement when running as uh, Ambleforth or uh, that Rumble Thunder does as a large beast, or that Cybra does as a as a doggo. Who, while doggos love running as fast as they can, they get tired. And at this point, Cybra is eating on some snow uh, to kind of like get water as well as just enjoy a nice little bit of a cool down before uh, she eventually curls up between Arjan and Gwen uh, and goes to sleep. Uh, Calum is <clears throat> has Tikan in his lap and he's like petting the top of her head and he's thinking. And Tikan is just like, moving their head with your hand so that way they can try and get like max amount of pets per brush <clears throat> whatever is gonna come up I want to be ready for it he says to Corey and Corey uh, Calum is just like petting the head of this little wooden marionette figure that again has a stationary mask that always has this small smile uh, with painted lips on it that's just like looking towards you. In what regard? I don't know. Uh, maybe I can make something to better take a hit or help you guys out I have an idea for something do you I don't know if it'll work and he's gonna set Tcan down go into his bag and pull out a bunch of writing supplies <clears throat> uh, materials and he's gonna step like 60 feet away from the camp but is still with an eyesight Tikan will follow you. Oh no! Hold on. You just can't. You could you sit over there, please, just for my own peace of mind. Their shoulders slump a little bit, and expressively, as this tiny little puppet can, they like Charlie Brown walk over towards where you have directed them and sit. Uh, using my the spell creation feature of my um, wizard archetype i want to add a stipulation to the nevermore spell that i've been using okay 
Bingo. And uh, half the damage is converted to healing for myself. If I were, <clears throat> if I bump up the spell level in addition to that, would yeah. that work out? Yeah. Um, that is going to take quite a while to do. Could I, over the course of the next couple of days? Over the just... next couple of days, yeah, for sure. Okay. But yeah, we'll say for the purposes of this, um, so we have your quote-unquote magical mishap table uh, that occurs at each spell level that you try and create the spell for or adjust the spell for. Each level is going to take you roughly about four hours uh, of time working through it to actually uh to actually achieve each level of the spell it's a lugubrious okay. process cool, cool cool so right now um there is the flourish of the self-writing quill as calum like starts directing it and writing the runes down mm. uh, plus arcana 18 on okay. the first roll for tonight success uh, parchment flutters down, he grabs it, he looks it over, and walks back to Corey. It's a start. It's really remarkable, the things that you can do. Well, it's... Still learning how to use all of them, so... Don't get too impressed yet. At least you're not exploding into flumps. Corey, I have a question. Calum's spell process took roughly half of your watch what were you doing during that time um watching him uh probably keeping an eye out for danger um and also uh probably reach over grab to con and place uh them on her knee as she's sitting just kind of cross-legged on the ground. And as you're sitting cross-legged and Tikan is watching Calum, eventually you'll see them just like with their head crocked up looking towards you. And they can't communicate with you at all. But there is this like, the feeling that you get is that of when a small animal is on your lap and wanting pets uh Corey's still in summer form so she just kind of looks down at Takan and says what are you looking at mm. and as Takan continues to stare and tip her head um she will reach out and just kind of like poke her in the forehead and you see uh the the small cloak that they have that's made of what look like raven feathers just sort of like furls a little bit like the hackles are raised as you poke them in the forehead and they tip back and like little hands come out and straighten themselves and then sit forward and just look up at you and they uh, extend their feet out and try and hop down from your leg she'll let her go and Tikan goes back over to where uh, Calum had directed them, and they just sit down in the snow uh, and wait. Oh, and... Ambleforth will come up next to Coriander, and she'll lean against him. Tikan is sad. Oh, no. She had no one. Okay. Uh, if Tikan is sad, then Coriander it's gets hard to. Up. Corey, it's hard to see if Tikan is sad, mostly because, again, their mask is always in a slight smile. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but she's got, like, really... Uh, Expressive body language, yes. If she if she is sad, uh, then Corey will, like, make a big, like, begrudging show of, like, getting up and, like, leading Ambleforth over, and then, like, sitting on one side of Tikan, Ambleforth's on the other. Uh, and she just kind of sits there and, uh, like, looks a little bit, like, grumpy about it. But, like, if t wants pets again, she will give her uh, begrudging scritches. That's all t wants at this point in time. 
And so, Caleb, once you are making your way back over to Corey, Tikan is currently on Corey's lap and has been receiving scritches, but now seems like slightly curled up. Caleb gives a small smile, sits down in the snow. Well, that's step one. Hopefully nothing bad happens in the next couple of days. We should probably check on Olivia again. <sighs> Hi, Olivia. Are you okay? You seemed rushed. The response- Oh, wait, hold. <laughs> X that. I take Corey's hand. 25 words each cast and he'll close his eyes and he'll be the conduit to cast the edited mending spell or not many message spell sending spell that one yes that one hi dear things have been crazy are you all right love coriander <laughs> Kim looks over to her. You have 25 words. I don't know what to say. And the response that uh, you get is, have you been able to do this the whole time? <laughs> and then uh, I am fine. You just got me at a bad time. Is fighting some pirates. Everything is okay. Just a little impractical at the moment. I love you dearly. Olivia. Next bit ascending. Do you wish to continue, Corey? Can she? I can I can blow another spell sod, yeah. <laughs> uh was Caleb able to hear that? Um I don't believe for the edited sending that Caleb is able to. He's just a magical conduit. He could feel the response come <coughs> back, but he could like to know that the spell was received, but not what it says. I feel like the first time Corey speaks it, like uses uh, the sending spell through him, she says it out loud. Oh yeah, so he's able oh, to track it. Yeah, you can also just think it. I, I knew that. I didn't. I didn't know that. Uh, she <laughs> looks down at her hands for a second, and she just kind of gives and. him a look and says, "One more." Sent. Um, she says, I love you too, Olivier. I love you so much. We'll see you soon. I love you. Are you going to tell her that you couldn't do this all along? Nope. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> and there is a, there is a pause. It is not as immediate this time uh, coming back. And Olivier says, I hope everything is all right. I hope that you are okay. And I hope your friends are okay. I love you too. And that's it. Uh, or I guess the last thing that she says after I love you too is I'll see you in the Rask. She sounds a little down. What? I said Corey just kind of nods. Um, and she reaches out 
to Caleb and just kind of takes his hand and squeezes it for a second. Everything okay? She will nod curtly. Good. Um, good. We can continue our watch. Okay. The watch goes by uneventfully. Thankfully. And Gwen, you and Arjan wake up the next day uh, to the sun coming up uh, and kind of hitting against you. And when you wake, uh, you can see that the snow is actually beginning to melt. At this point, uh, with the amount of time that you have spent under the mountain, most of the snow is actually melted away at this point. It wasn't the large banks that had been here before when you were on your way at this point. There is just little spatterings of actual snowfall that are still around. And even then, that is just the remainder of winter of uh, the winter droppings. Um, and God damn it, LP. Uh, and at this point, uh, you are all able to then gather your things and uh without if you unless there's anything that you would like to do come morning uh you can then begin heading out there is uh this is the first time in a month we're waking up like under the under, under the actual sky. light air oh yes and <sighs> this fact is not lost on rumble thunder who at this point is like going over towards a grass patch and just throwing their side down onto the ground and is just doing these big rolls that a bison is only capable of. I want to stretch my wings. Okay. So, Gwen, you are in the process of waking up. Coffee is getting made at this point, and I feel like you are still in a drowsy state. Calum, you and Corey are finishing up, kind of getting everything ready in the morning. And you see Arjan extend his wings. This is the first time that you have seen Arjan have control over them. He's had some sort of control before when using uh, Misty Step-like abilities, but this definitely seems more like when you see a bird raise up its wings or a bat extend out their wings like it is much more of a uh it is much more of a show of dominance against the sky it seems like oh shit looking good there arjan Caleb's, or Caleb, god Corey's just kind of standing there like stoically uh, arm crossed over her chest and just kind of under her breath to Caleb says, did you prepare Featherfall today? Nope. Hmm. Oh, wait. Maybe? It's fine. I also have Featherfall now. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Nope. <laughs> this is going to be interesting. Uh... And he'll try to ascend. And it is one of the stranger feelings that you have received over the last month. There is a moment where, as your wings stretch, you are... Part of you is reclaimed by a muscle memory that you've never had before. It is just instinct that lets you know how to do this thing. Your uh, digitigrade legs bend, and the uh, and with that, your wings kind of uh, fold, uh, again, kind of extend outward. And as you jump up and release in a spring-like motion, those wings beat down against the ground, and you begin to ascend. And with a controlled motion that you have only ever practiced when not in your own state, 
uh, only when Tarlean had originally taken control uh, after you had died on the boat. You begin to soar. This is not a moment of a fledgling's initial journey. This is your body instinctively knowing and claiming the sky as its own as your wings beat. What is going through Arjan's, uh, how is Arjan feeling at this point, I guess? He, he is just like thinking, he's, he's trying to think through this, like everything that's going on, just like, how do I manage to do this? What the hell? But also he's just like, man, it's great to not be uh, underground anymore. And that that's mainly what's on his mind. It's just like, oh my god, fresh air. Do you keep ascending or do you find like a comfortable height? No, uh, I think he just wanted to uh, like take a running start and jump up and like do a like little uh, circle around. Uh, but like not get more than like 60 feet in the air. Okay. And it's weird because, like, you can feel your tail twitching ever so slightly to help act as a more, uh, to help kind of direct where your wing, uh, where your body is going in conjunction with your wings. It's not a feeling that you've ever, like, had to do before, but it is, again, this is a very natural feeling for you. And Calum, Corey, and Gwen, you watch as Arjan flies roughly 60 feet in the air and his draconic wings beat under the open sky and even though he still has the same look of concern and deep thought that Arjan typically uh, expresses he's doing it he's flying uh, there's a moment where Calum goes into his bag and he pulls out a small crystal gem, holding it into his hands, and he just casts portrait. Okay. moment. Duh. Uh, whenever he lands, it's like a... Uh, uh, it's not the superhero landing so much as, like, he lands on all fours. Uh... Ooh. He has digitized grade legs. They're meant to kind of bend that way. Uh, probably the most draconic that you've seen him thus far. Do okay. a backflip! Why does yeah. everyone say that? No. I, I, okay. So that, that worked. Corey has a very stern look on her face. She walks up to Arjan and uh, she claps a hand on his shoulder and says, you were fucking gorgeous. Uh, um, thank you. Claps him on the back again. <sighs> so I'm still got the better part of two weeks of this. Yep. Life on the road. Better get rolling. You mean running? Cartwheels roll too. We don't have a cot. Semantics. He's like already <laughs> getting on top of Amber Ball Ford. Mounting up. <laughs> okay. I swear to Coralon, a rask that I hold out for this. <laughs> It's going to be very disappointing if he turns out to be dead when we show up. I'm getting more and more Australian by the moment. <laughs> and we just came out from down under. <laughs> hey. God damn it. Being is so fluid. Okay. Uh, so, uh, you all begin to head east towards the floating city of Vascor. As you are heading out, uh, it is going to take roughly 10 days travel at this point. 
Uh, is there anything in particular that you would like to explicitly do over this 10 days travel? Caleb, I know that you are in the process of making your new spell. Uh, so uh, Nevermore was third level? Uh Nevermore was inflict wounds, so okay. it's just first level. A first level spell. So if it is also giving you health back, <clears throat> um, I would say that would probably be either a third or a fourth level spell. Uh, if I were just... Uh, because then I also want to increase the damage to keep it... Well, no, half. Two. If you're increasing the damage as well, that would be closer to around a fifth level spell. I'll keep it to the... <clears throat> What's it? So third level does a six and twenty two. So twenty two is fine. Yeah. That's it for the. Uh, are we just gonna keep rolling here? It's a. It only takes four hours. So if you spend some extra time. Okay. Cool. Next one's a nineteen. Yep. Six is twenty five. Okay. Yeah. So you are able to. Uh, you are able to create this spell over your journey. Uh, I know that previously, uh, I believe in Knights in the Courtyard last week, you had specified that you wanted to send out uh, a slew of sending spells. Uh, is there anyone that you would, uh, anyone else that you would like to reach out to during this time? Uh, it's basically just like checking up on Gwen's parents, checking up on uh, drafts, uh, dragons and drafts, uh, checking up on Farron, see what's going on. Okay. Uh, Farron lets you know that uh, they only have a few days left until they end up getting to Gilead. Yep. Uh, being just Farron, Prescott, and Mugwort, uh, they don't have to worry about a cart much in the same way that your group didn't have to worry about a cart. So it was just those three fuckheads on horseback making their way there. Um <laughs> Gwen's family uh when you send the message it is definitely like uh contacting grandparents via some like <laughs> form of Skype they don't know where this message this sending spell is coming from they've never been personally sent before uh so a lot of it is uh when you explain like oh this is Calum how are you checking in uh the response is Calum is Gwen there? Can you put <laughs> Gwen on? Hello? Caleb reaches is this out, thing on? Grabs Gwen's I hand. I can't see you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Gwen will send a message. Uh, I'm doing magic! <laughs> it was the, end, the last two. And last three words. the last three words of I'm doing magic. And then uh, <laughs> the response is Songbird! She's doing magic. <laughs> I know. I know. Oh my god. I can't believe it. Do you think it's her friend? No, I don't think they're together. <laughs> Thank you for the money. That was very and then the message cuts out. Gwen just kind of sitting there like she would have relayed like going here. This is what we're doing. Sort of, like just the the basics of, of what's going on. Everything is good. Sent chocolates. I'm doing magic. Uh, Gwen kind of like turns to to Caleb and she's like, "Now I understand what what you must feel like when I don't understand your magic bullshit." Yep. And Caleb walks away. <laughs> okay. Uh, and then, um, with Dragon's Drafts, um, the response that you get is, things are going well, business is still successful, the Keshin have come back, Oh, no. Where should we send the next payment? Reports to Arjan. Ah, uh, keep the keep that. Tell, do tell them that we're uh, going to try to stop by uh, 
or or that it, they, they they should prepare for a visit. Not that, that God, that sounds awful, awfully corporate. Uh yeah, yeah we're gonna stop by. Yes, we know we vanished. Cool. Okay. Or this is foresight that Wings has that Coriander wouldn't. So I'm not going to worry about it. <laughs> Nights in the courtyard. Nights in the courtyard. All right. So it was Gwen's parents, Dragon's Drafts. Um, if Arjun wants to talk to Makoth, I'll pose that to him. She has a way to contact me. Cool. Um, the, the entire time he's been writing the trans like the transactions, the trying to recall the transcripts and writing it down in his notebook just in case like they miss anything just like as a record oh of course yeah in one night when cory and caleb are on watch and he's completed the spell he's going to walk up to a tree and apologize in advance to whatever gods are watching <laughs> Um, he takes a dagger, cuts along the side of his arm, and then <sighs> sighs, casts the spell to hit the tree. Okay. Make an attack roll. Or actually, roll for damage. It's a stationary object, and you can just put your hand up against it. There's Just roll the damage. Let's see how cool. much this is. Um, six and seven and uh, 20 points of psychic damage. Psychic damage? Yeah, I modified the Shrike version of it, which is psychic damage. Okay. That hurt a tree? The tree takes nothing. Oh, well, fuck. It turns out that a tree is immune to being hurt mentally. Ow. And ow, ow, you ow. now just have a a bleeding arm. Corey's gonna like she's sitting off in the corner with her legs crossed. She's gonna pull out the axe and say, You wanna borrow the ace? No, it's fine. I'm gonna have to do a live test at some point. Not me, bro. Alright, fine. <laughs> she stands up. Wait, is Arjun awake watching this? If you want him to be. Sure. I apologize in advance, Arjun. That's gone forever. Come on, it's not like she I just been... fucking kills Arjun. It's not like I haven't been stabbed before. Oh, God. Sorry. What are you going to do? Stab me? <laughs> From man stabbed. Uh, Gwen's gonna talk to uh, her tribe okay. at some point. Uh, wh whatever the next time was. For sure. Twenty-one. Yeah, that that hits. Uh, seven plus seven is fourteen. Plus five is nineteen points of psychic damage. Okay. Um, I feel like you've done about 18%. <laughs> Yikes. Corey provides healing. But... Alright, now hit him again. What is going on? What are you guys doing? Gwen, uh, testing something and, like, Calum's arm is healed, but before that, it's like, you see Calum reach a spectral hand into Arjan and pull out a red thread. Wow! Whoa, 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 Hey, And then whoa. it just lashes around his arm and it heals. Okay. Nice. We don't hurt friends, right? No but, no, but we do practice blood magic on the person who knows the most about it. Is that what we're doing now? Is that as a group what we do? We do blood magic? Is that, is, are we all cool with this, Corey? Also, also, I read that you don't hurt your friends unless it's consensual. <laughs> that it was in a note it's fine he knows my safe word the camera pans over to the pamphlet that ghost gave caleb 
<laughs> pans back over to the group. I, I think that this is the first time that Corey's really given any amount of attention to Caleb when whilst he's doing uh magic with these red strings uh like flavor text. Um so like she was all like she was all like uh in good spirits and just kind of like almost like playfully sadistic about all of this until uh the point where she saw that and then she just kind of like stared for a bit and then like shook her self out of it uh and as like all of the winds is out of her sails she's no longer having any fun with any of this why am i the the most normal person in this group the halfling who is the leader of a goliath tribe who has a goliath spirit inside of her is so. the most normal <laughs> I, I think it's because you're not wrapped up in any divine shit. Corey heals our song. All right, fair enough, man. So, uh, you want to tell me exactly what that was? I, um, because that looks like blood magic, and I don't think you'll follow any sanguine orders. If so, you would need to finish the job. No, it's not blood magic per se. I've been doing a lot of research and thinking into matters of life and death and dying. That so explains it then. Yeah. This is what I came up with. You came up with it, did you? I might have had a little inspiration from my last time dying. I'm just going to say this once. I've seen something like that once before. She just kind of holds a hand over where the Raven Queen ripped her open. Oh. <sighs> Caleb looks very deflated. He's just gonna walk away from the group but stay within eye shot. You okay, Arjan? Yeah, it really it was nothing. Corey, you okay? She doesn't answer. <laughs> Oh, she okay. Just, <laughs> she just walks away. <sighs> walks over to Calum. So you're uh, trying out some new magic stuff now? <clears throat> I mean, I have been for a while, but I've never tried to modify anything I've known in this sort of sense. Yeah, just be conscious that it's uh, kind of a something that Corey doesn't feel too fondly about. Right. I'll keep that in mind. Okay. Uh, this isn't like something a god told you to do, right? No, I've... We've had a month. I've had a lot of time to think. So I don't know if it's like some divine inspiration or providence or whatever. Well, I hope that you know what you're doing. Yeah. There's another spell, but I, it's not that bad. Why don't we hold off on practicing for another day or two, okay? Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah. <sighs> Corey, Ma our mom, uh, Gwen, walks away. <laughs> These kids are going to kill me. Not until the Civil War rock. True that. Wait, is Gwen Cap? Sure. Sure. 
Spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> and as uh, as this realization takes hold in LB's mind that Gwen may indeed be Captain America, that is where we are going to call it for tonight's session. So I would like to say thank you to everybody who decided to stop on by and join us for this wonderful session. Safari Fred, thank you for the follow. I'm sorry we didn't get to you earlier in the game. I hope you're still here, but we appreciate you stopping by. Speaking of people that we appreciate stopping by each and every week, hey, RJ, where can we find you? What do you do? Hey, everybody. I'm RJ here on the channel, but you can catch me at rjustice 2 on Twitter and Twitch, where I tweet about the nerdy things in my life. Uh, I'll be streaming a lot more next week, so come catch me as I drag Wingsy around the wonderful, wonderful world of Dauntless and talk about some really weird shit. Uh, you can catch me uh, here tomorrow as well as Hubris, the tiefling warlock sorcerer, as we play through our War of the Spark game where we are diving into Ravnica and some bullshit. Also this week, you can catch myself and the lovely LB Hackamuck over at G Game Nights with a K, where we play a Pathfinder 2nd edition game bi-weekly. I play a half-orc barbarian. Apparently I get a lot of the kills on that show, so come check it out. Thenakinu.com Cool. I'm LB Hackamup. You can find me at LB Hackamup on the Twitters, where I just updated my pin. Uh, which is my pin message is my schedule. I stream Mondays, Tuesdays, now Wednesdays. Uh, this week we are starting our new game on Nerd Immersion's channel, uh, DM'd by the wonderful Jordan with a PH silently in the middle. Uh, this week I normally would be on Damn It Barry's channel, but uh, I will be out of town because birthday weekend. Woo! Uh, <laughs> but I will be on Sunday with RJ, so. Uh, stop by and say hello and tomorrow you just play ghost and i'm oh so excited thankyna.com hi i'm cyber you can find me on twitter at cyber October one i i ship post i talk about whenever i go live on twitch.tv slash cyber October one where we're playing through so many video games real badly but talking about the the lore and stuff and world building and is it's good time doing Castlevania Mirror of Fate now, which is my favorite of the Lord's Shadow. Um, all the archives of that go to YouTube, youtube.com slash several triple one. Uh, we do all, I also have a podcast with Kyle with Nan where we get drunk, do parkour, and talk about stuff going on in the RPG world. It's called Let's Talk About It. Uh, another episode coming at some point on a, like, like and subscribe to get the get the notification ding 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 that bell um <laughs> for rpg stuff uh i'm on dm's guild i have a patreon uh where i do conversions and design work and stuff uh but for actual plays i'm here on mondays as this boy who is no longer a cleric uh and is now a, a fighter uh i am i am also on the thursday game on this uh where i play albus the semi hybrid sorcerer Ab-a-lip. i'm also on prairie starter channel on saturdays in a Taldori fifth edition game where i play Kurik, the shifter druid um awu it's a good time tonightkinner.com Speaking of DanaeKeener.com, hi everybody. I'm Wings, also known as Danae Keener. You can find me at DanaeKeener.com. I do nerdy drawings mostly related to D&D and a lot of things on this channel. Uh, you can find me here on Mondays, Tuesdays, and sometimes on Wednesdays, just like this week, because we're going to be uh, playing in our Monster Noir game, uh, where Steven is also a player and GB runs, and uh, our very good friends Kaz and Satan come on once a month, and we get to have a very good time with our uh, homebrew game, like the whole game itself is homebrew. Um, and we all have a fantastic time with this noir setting uh, with fantasy monsters and creatures. And, oh God, Danakino.com. 
And if you've made it this far, you probably already know who I am. But if you don't, hey, fella, what's up? It's me, your buddy, your pal, your friend, the indoor adventurer, the showrunner here at twitch.tv slash indoor adventures. We do shows like this Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday at 5.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Uh, those games, of course, are the ones that we already talked about. We got uh, Homebrew Monday, Ravnica Tuesday for now, and then uh, Monster Noir Wednesday, and then Ghost of Salt Marsh on Thursday. So you can catch us four nights this week uh playing these uh excellent games and i said for now on our tuesday game because sometime in mid-march we are going to be switching uh that tuesday game to a sunday game uh because it works better for the dm schedule works better for my schedule so we're going to try that out for at least a little while uh so that way uh you know it's helpful to have a break every once in a while. Uh, and with that, we are going to be going into our Patreon-supported after show called Knights in the Courtyard, where we answer questions not only from the community, but also from each other. So if you have had any questions that you would like to ask us, consider checking out our Discord link to the side, or if you are watching this as a VOD, check it out below uh hey if this is if you're listening in as an audio cast check the description and there will be a link there promise uh but with that we are going to be heading into our patreon after show so i would like to say once again thank you to these players for putting up with my bullshit this week thank you to everybody who decided to stop on by and we will see you guys next time all right everybody Bye bye